All right, so uh, number one there on your handout, we're just going to kind of work through these together and kind of just get you some experience with that, and that'll help you uh, do the practice that we've got. The practice is pretty short. It's only got eight columns, so it's, it's not bad at all. So number one says the width of a rectangle is six meters less than its length. Then it tells us that the area of the rectangle is 112 square meters. Find the dimensions of a rectangle. So of that rectangle. So we got a rectangle. And how do you find area of a rectangle? Killing Alfonso Webb and Noah Hayes report to the office. So how do you find area of a rectangle? Length times width. Okay, so we got a length and we got a width. But it tells us something about those in the problem. It says the width is six meters less than its length. So instead of W, what can I put there? What would be six meters less? L minus six, right? That'd be six meters less than the length. Whatever the length is, we don't know what it is. But they did tell us that the area is 112 square meters. So what we can do then is take that and put it in the place of the area. And instead of the width, we're going to put L minus 6. So we're just taking the area formula and replacing it with the things they told us about. And it asks us to find the dimensions of that, that particular uh, rectangle. So we're going to set up this quadratic and solve it. So distribute the L squared minus 6L. And if we're going to solve that by using either factoring or quadratic formula or maybe even a graph, get it equal to zero. So we're going to move the 112 over. L squared minus 6L minus 112. And then we could try factoring. I think we'll work on this one. Uh, let's see, negative 112 add to be negative 6. I'm just trying to think of things that go into 112. Um, I think 4 goes into it. 4 and 28, that's too far apart. Uh, so I, 7 goes into 28. So I know 7 would go into 112. I wonder if 14 will go into 112 because that's a bigger number. 112 divided by 14. It goes 8 times. 8 and 14 are 6 apart. That's the right uh, distance apart. So that'd be uh, 14 would be negative and 8 would be positive. And that allows us to do L minus 14. L plus 8, set each one of those equal to 0, <laughs> 14 meters, negative 8 meters, but we know it can't be negative, right, because we're talking about the length of a side of a rectangle, so not going to be a negative answer on that one. Uh, so 14 meters is the length. So I'm going to write that out, length, 14 meters. What would the width be? Eight, po positive eight meters, yes. It's 14 minus six is eight. Out of that. Here is a neat thing that can help you as you're trying to solve these. Uh, once I got to this step right here, if I graphed x squared, minus 6x minus 112. If I hit graph, and this one, it's kind of wide, so I need to zoom out. So I'm going to hit 3 and hit enter. And it zooms out, and I can figure out where it's crossing the x-axis there, and that would be my dimension uh, out of that. So you can use the graph to kind of help you along in solving these. Uh, but the dimensions that we were trying to find, when we got it equal to zero, if you'll graph it, where it's crossing the x-axis are going to be those numbers. So that can help you with your factoring uh, as well.
Uh, so keep in mind those things could, could, might could help you. Let's look at number two. Another rectangle problem. It says the length of a rectangle is one foot more than twice its width. The area is 300 square feet. What are the dimensions? So this is almost the same problem. Just got a different kind of rectangle. It says the length is one foot more than twice its width. So how, what would be an expression for the width? I mean for the length, sorry. That's W is our width. One foot more than twice the width. 2W plus 1. All right, and we know still area uh, is length times width. So we know the area is 300. And I'm just writing it that way just because I like to have the number on the right hand side. Doesn't really matter. And then I'm marking it the same way we did number one. Distribute 2W squared plus W 300. Subtract the W or the 300 over there with the W, and then we're going to try to solve that. There we go. So I'm going to try to do factoring again negative 600 and add to be one. Two times 300. It's always front times back, remember? A times C. And the B is always in the middle, or and it's in the bottom. And uh, that'd be 24 negative times 25, I think. Because I know 600 divided by 25 is that. I, anything that ends with double zero, I usually will start with a 25 to try, just because that's like dollars and breaking it up into quarters usually gives me a good chance, at least starting somewhere, get a good starting spot. So 24 and 25, and I know that the 25 should be positive because it's adding to be a positive one. And then I can't do the shortcut on the, on the factors. I got to go 2W squared minus 24W plus 25W minus 300. So I'm, I'm grouping. Three dollars has uh, twelve quarters in it. So there's our factors: two W plus twenty-five and W minus twelve. Set each of those equal to zero. What kind of answer is that one going to get us? If I subtract twenty-five. What kind of answer am I getting there? It's negative, isn't it? It's not necessarily the complex, it's just negative. And we're talking about the length and the width of a rectangle. Length and width is never negative, right? So we, we don't even, if we can tell that that's going to get us a negative answer at whatever step, and we're talking about the dimensions of some kind of object, we can just go ahead and throw that out. We know it's not going to be an answer because you can't have a negative length or a width. You know, how long something is always a positive number. Uh, this one over here is going to give us positive 12 is the width. So the width is 12 meter or feet in this problem. What would the length be? Twenty-five. Two more, or one more than twice the width. So two times 12 plus one is 25 feet. And those are the dimensions of that rectangle. Okay. So dimensions of a rectangle kind of problems. Uh, setup is pretty well the same. Uh, on one and two, I mean, it's just different numbers, different ways of getting it, but the same style of solving the problem, trying to find those dimensions. Um, 
Let's look at number three real quick. Dimensions of a rectangle can be expressed as x plus 6 and x minus 2. The area is 65 square inches. Uh, find those dimensions. It almost seems like they've done too much for us for this problem. But they haven't. I mean, it's this. they actually have done more for us than they did on number one and number two. They told us that, that it's a rectangle. One side is X minus two. The other side is X plus six. I don't know which one's width, which one's length. It doesn't really matter. But I know those are the length and the width. So I just need to figure out what those numbers are for X. So I'm going to set up X plus six times X minus two is equal to the area, which is 65. So I, I'm still using that same area of a rectangle because they, that's the information they gave me was the area of that rectangle. So I'm setting that up. <coughs> and then i got to multiply all this out. The x squared minus 2x plus 6x minus 12. Little tough here. Move the sixty five. Be seventy seven, is that right? And I can set it up and factor it. Or if you wanted to do quadratic formula, it'll get you the same answers. Uh, but I, I think this is actually not too bad. What numbers multiply to be seventy seven? 11 and 7, which one should be negative? The 7 should be. And that makes it nice, x plus 11, x minus 7. Set those equal to 0, solve them. This one's a negative number, this one's a positive number. Which one gets thrown away? The 11 gets thrown away because it's negative. It wants the dimensions of, you go back to read the problem, it says find the dimensions of the rectangle. It didn't say find x, it says find the dimensions. The dimensions are x plus 6 and x minus 2. I got to plug in 7. 13 inches by 5 inches. Those are the dimensions. You got to pay attention to what it's asking for. And pay attention to um, what you have uh, when you get done. Okay. So pay, pay close attention to what it's asking for because sometimes it just wants X, sometimes it wants um, the actual a little bit more work too. Okay. Let's look at uh, number four. The base of a triangle is seven less than twice its height. So we've got a triangle. The height of that triangle is going to be like this, this line that's going through there. That's a height of a triangle. Uh, and it says the base of this triangle is seven less than twice its height. Uh, the area is 102 square centimeters. Uh, find the length of the base. So the base is going to be this side down here at the bottom. Uh, and the height, we don't know, so I'm just going to call it H. And the base is 7 less than twice the height. 2H minus 7. How do you find area of a triangle? What's the formula? Yeah, base times height divided by 2. Or 1 half base times height, maybe the way you memorize that. Uh, it's the same thing. So we know the base measurement is 2H minus 7, and we know the height is H from our picture here that we've drawn. And we know that the area is 102 square centimeters. This is almost the same kind of problem we've just done with 1, 2, and 3. It's just dealing with a different formula to start with. So we're going to set up base 2H minus 7 times height. All of that divided by 2 is equal to 102. So we're just setting up the problem. We're replacing area with 102. We're replacing 
base and height with the with the dimensions that we've got written there. Okay, how do I get rid of this two that's in the bottom? Yeah, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two to get rid of that. Two hundred and four over there now. Now what do I need to do? Yeah, distribute that H. It's going to give me 2H squared minus 7H. It's 204. Now what? Get it equal to zero. That's right. So I'm going to subtract the 204. 2H squared minus 7H minus 204 equals zero. And I'm going to factor again to solve. What goes on the top part of my x? Good job, negative 408. And then negative 7 goes in the bottom. I don't know much about 408, so I'm going to do a little factor tree to help me. I know 4 goes into it, 100. And two times so it's three twos, a three, and a seventeen. That seventeen is kind of like the weird one. Uh, it's kind of like me and my three brothers. I'm the seventeen of the bunch, probably. Okay. So I'm thinking if I use seventeen as one of them. The other one would, how many times does 17 go into 408? Twenty-four times. How far apart are 17 and 24? They're seven. That's the right distance apart. So 17 and 24, the 24 needs to be negative to make that happen. There's no real tricks to factoring like this. I know some of you have struggled with factoring as we've been doing it. There's not tricks to it. It's just numbers. It's all it is. It's just working with numbers and trying to, you know, some people are faster at it. They don't have a, a trick that they're using. I'm going to put plus 17H minus 24H minus 204 and then group that. Our factors are H minus 12 and 2H plus 17. 17. Set those equal to zero. I'm going to stop right there on that one because I know it's going to end up being negative when I get done. And I know I can't have a negative height on my rec on my uh, triangle that I'm dealing with here. So remember that dimensions can never be negative. I'm just going to jump straight there. I know 12 is the height. And the base is... Seven less than twice the height, so 24 minus 7 would be 17 centimeters. And it asks for the length of the base. So that's the one that they're looking for there. So I'm bridging into those triangle things. It's always fun. Right. Questions about that one? I know I'm kind of moving fast, but questions about that. So the first four we've been doing area stuff with. Uh, so you've seen several examples of the area type problems. The ones you're going to have to do for practice, same kind of idea. Nothing much different about them. It's different numbers, maybe a different description on the on what you're looking for there. Let's look at number five and uh, talk about it. Number five asks us to take that hypotenuse of a triangle is one foot more than twice the length 
of the shorter leg. What kind of triangle are they talking about? It has a hypotenuse and legs. What, what kind of right? What kind of triangle is that? A right triangle. Right triangles have hypotenuse. The sides that are not the hypotenuse are called the legs. Okay, so we're dealing with a right triangle here. They don't ever say that, but by using the word hypotenuse, they're saying, hey, we got a right triangle. Use some things with right triangles, okay? And it says the hypotenuse of the, tri the right triangle is one foot more than twice the length of the shorter leg. So I just drew a right triangle. I didn't really think much about it. I drew one leg shorter than the other. Okay. So I don't know how much the shorter leg is. I'm going to call it X. And it says the hypotenuse is one foot more than twice the length of the shorter leg. So the hypotenuse is going to be 2X plus 1. And then that next sentence says the longer leg is 7 feet longer than the shorter leg. So what would that be? X plus seven. Oh me. Well, we got a bunch of X's in there. But it's a right triangle. So what does that open up as far as things that we're allowed to do with right triangles? Something you've been doing for a long time with right triangles. Yes, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. So we're trying to find the lengths of the sides, the dimensions, right? So to find the lengths of legs on a right triangle, that Pythagorean theorem is what we're using. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So I'm going to plug in the stuff that I know. I know that the shorter leg is x and the longer leg is x plus 7. Those are a and b. The hypotenuse is always C, so 2X plus 1 goes in the place of it. Now we got a lot of work to do, algebra-wise. A lot going on. So we're going to square X plus 7. What's it mean to square X plus 7? Yeah, it's like X plus 7 times itself, right? And when I do that... That's going to be x squared plus 7x plus another 7x plus 49. But I had this x squared here I was bringing on down. And on the other side, that's multiplying 2x plus 1 times itself. So that would be 4x squared plus 2x, plus 2x, plus 1. And now I'm just going to put like things together, like terms together on each side. So x squared and x squared is 2x squared. 7x and 7x be 14x. And 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. So I've just combined all the like terms on each side. Now what do I need to do to solve this problem? Get it equal to zero. So I need to get all the like things together on one side and make sure zero is on the other side. Uh, I, it doesn't matter which direction you go here. I'm going to go, I'm going to move all this stuff to the right. The reason I'm going to do that is because when I subtract 2x from 4x, I get a positive number. If you move the 4x squared over here, you get a negative in front of x squared, which doesn't make it impossible to do. It just makes it tougher. You got to deal with negative signs more. So I'm going to move the 2x squared by subtraction. I'm going to move the 14x by subtraction. I'm going to move the 49 by subtraction. All of those cancel each other out, and there's zero. 2x squared minus 10x minus 48. And by doing that, I've, I've made things a little bit better on myself. 
Uh, because what do I know that everybody on the right hand side can do now? 2, 10, and 48. They're all divisible by 2, so I can just divide them all by 2 and get rid of that. Uh, make it a little easier on myself there. So I'm going to divide everybody by 2. Even this 0 over here. Because technically, that's what's happening. So that's x squared minus 5x minus 24. And now I'm going to do my factoring for that. Multiply to be negative 24. Add to be negative 5. <coughs> what would that be? Negative eight and three. Set each of those equal zero. What do I know about that negative three? It ain't working, right? Side. So the dimensions of our rec of our triangle are what they're asking for. So I know 8 feet, x plus 7 would be 15 feet, and 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17 feet. Those are the dimensions of my triangle that, that, that I started with. That was that's probably one of the tougher ones that you have to do because you got to do all that multiplying out at the beginning before you can even work the problem to solve. So it's a lot more multiplying out when you got to do that Pythagorean theorem stuff. So that's probably one of the hardest ones that we'll do today. Uh, but it's not. It's it's doable. It just takes a good bit of work to get there, and there's really not any shortcuts to it beyond, unless you just made a lucky guess <laughs> at a number and and got got the right area out of that. Um, let's look at number six. We're not going to work it completely. We're just going to talk about how to set it up because we're, the work is all the same every time. So how you work the problems is not going to change, but how you set them up is a big difference. Here. It says the re the height of a rectangular prism is three feet. The length and the width can be expressed as X minus one and X plus four. If the volume of the prism is 198 feet cube or cubic feet find the value of x okay so what is what is, is a rectangular prism it's like a cube or a, a rectangular box is all that a rectangular prism is so look something like this you wanted to draw it It says something about volume. How do you find volume of a rectangular box? Yeah. Length times width times height. What do we know about the length of this thing? Either x minus 1 or x plus 4. It doesn't matter which one you call it. So I'm going to say x minus 1. What do we know about the width? It's the other one, x plus 4. What do we know about the height? 3. What do we know about the volume? 198 cubic feet there. We've got a problem set up, ready to work. This is no different than what we just did earlier with the rectangular, uh, the rectangles and the, the triangles, finding the area. We just had volume to deal with at the beginning. <coughs> So you would multiply all this stuff out here. I would, this is my shortcut to this one. There is actually a little bit of a shortcut on this one. I would divide by three right there. Because three goes into 198. Uh, six with one left over, 66 times. 
If three wouldn't go into that number, then I wouldn't divide by it. But because three goes into 198, that's why I did that. If this were 197 over here, I couldn't do that because uh, it would just mess up my factoring that I'm going to have to do. Okay. So the next step would be doing what? Distribute. Yeah, distribute all this stuff together. Okay. So distribute that. We'll go ahead and do that part. X squared uh, plus 4X minus X minus 4. And I'm going to simplify X squared plus 3X minus 4 is equal to 66. And then what do you do next? Subtract the 66 to get it equal to what? Zero. <laughs> And you could, we'll go ahead and finish it. It's too, we're too close. Negative 70 add to be 3. 10 and negative 7. So the negative 10 mark out because you can't have a negative. So x is equal to 7. And it says find the value of x. That's what it asks for. I don't have to do anything else. I'm done with that one. That was nice. But the key is starting with the with the volume formula and going from there. Okay, let's talk about number seven. Ken. Flipping over on the back there. <clears throat> Ken has a rectangular shaped vegetable garden. It's 15 feet by 9 feet. Uh, we'd like to uh, increase the length and width by the same amount, X, so that the new garden has twice the current area. Find the value of X to, uh, to the nearest tenth of a foot. Okay. So currently, old Ken has got this rectangle garden. It's 15 feet by 9 feet. What's the area of that garden? 135, right? He's going to make a new garden. He's going to add some length and some width to this and make a new garden that's bigger. And the, the area is going to be twice as big. So... No, that would make the area four times as big. We want to add the same amount to the length and the width by, the, by what the problem said. It said we're going to add X to each side, right? So if I'm going to add X to the length, that's going to be X plus 15. If I'm going to add X to the width, that's going to be X plus 9. Once I get here, I've got a problem that looks just like what we started with on like number one, right? So how do we, what do we do next? Set up the area problem. Length times width equals area, right? We don't know how much we added to each side. It's not a nice, easy number. It's not like two. It, it's going to be something weird there because we're adding a length and a width, and then we're doubling the area. So that's a weird uh, little conversion that happens there. So we want to solve this equation. So how do we solve that? Distribute. So that's going to be x squared plus 9x plus 15x plus uh, 9 times 15 was 135. Okay, so I'm going to combine like terms while I'm doing that. That's going to give me x squared plus 24x minus 135. Uh, we could try factoring if we want to. Uh, multiply to be 135, add to be 24. 
I don't know much about 135, but I know 5 goes into it. 2, 27 times. Say again. Yeah, but we're trying to do factoring there, so we need something that multiplies to be negative 135 and adds to be a positive 24. Yee. What about 27 and negative 5? Does that had to be 24? Oh, got close though, didn't it? Not quite though, all right? Is there anything else that I might could try? That's the biggest pair of numbers that I've got that go into 135. Because five's prime, right? It won't factor. So I got to do quadrat. That's the key right there. We tried to factor it. We was hoping that worked. The numbers don't work. So we've got to do quadratic formula on that then. X equals negative B plus or minus A. B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. All right. So setting up negative 24 plus or minus the square root. And then we're going to set up 24 squared minus 4 times A is 1, C is negative 135. So big number underneath the square root, that discriminant is a pretty good number. Uh, and then 2 times 1 on the bottom. So I'm going to use a calculator to help me out with that discriminant. For parentheses, 24 squared minus 4 times A times C. 1,116. So negative 24 plus or minus the square root of 1,116 over 2. It asked me to find that dimension to the nearest tenth. So that tells me decimals are allowed. So I'm not even going to worry about doing the factor tree for the 1116. I'm just going to use the calculator to do the square root of it. Okay? And So the square root of 1116, 33.4066. I'm going to go four decimal places there. Uh, so negative 24 plus or minus, how much was that again? 33.4066. So I got two answers to work out here. Negative 24 plus 33.4066 and negative 24 minus 33.4066 over two. Which one of those can I throw away? The one that's got the negatives, right? Because that's gonna be a negative dimension. We can't have that, right? And so I just need to work out negative 24 plus 33.4066, get that answer, divide it by two, to one decimal place is what it asks for, the nearest tenth of a foot, so that'd be 4.7 feet that we're adding to each side. Tougher problem, definitely. What you realize when you start getting into this higher level math, like you guys are in algebra two right now, it's not so much being able to do harder stuff. We're still doing this is algebra one, quadratic formula stuff we learned in algebra one, but it's the experience of being able to have have done problems that require you to apply that that makes it tougher. Uh, so we're we're just trying to apply things. Let's look at number eight real quick and talk about how that would be set up. It says, given the diagram below, the area of the shaded region is 59 inches squared. 
What are the dimensions on the outside of the rectangle? So how many areas are needed to be found for this problem? Two. Two. The big rectangle and then the cutout inside. So the cutout's like the hole inside of the donut, right? So they've cut this little piece out and said only this shaded region is the 59. Okay. So we would set up, the setup for this problem would be take 2x minus 1 times x plus 6. That's the that's the shaded rectangle. And subtract the white rectangle. Which would be, what would be the, four, the white rectangle? What would we multiply together? X plus 3 times X. And that equals... Yeah, 59. And then what would we have to do? Distribute across through there. Get it equal to what? Zero. Quadratic formula or factoring to solve that. So the setup, though, is key to getting that done. But the work is still the same. Get it equal to zero. Quadratic formula or factoring. That's always what you're going to do here with the, with these problems. Let's look at number nine <clears throat> and get the setup on, on the consecutive positive odd integers. All right. Consecutive positive odd integers such that the square of the smaller integer added to three times the larger integer is 24. Okay, so consecutive positive odd integers. Let's pick a positive odd integer. Pick me one. Three. Three is a positive odd integer. What would be the next consecutive positive odd integer? How do you get from three to five? You add two, right? So if we don't know the first one and we call it X, the next one would be two more than that, which would be X plus two. If it asks for a third one, it would be X plus four. If it asks for a fourth one, be X plus six, that idea. Okay. So we're dealing with consecutive odds. The same setup happens if it asks for consecutive evens. The first one's x, the next one's x plus 2. So consecutive odds or consecutive evens, the first one's always going to be x, the next one's going to be the x plus 2, and x plus 4, and so on. That's always going to be the setup for those. Okay? And then we follow the instructions. It says the square of the smaller one. Which one's smaller? x. Square of that. That'd be x squared, wouldn't it? Added to plus three times the larger one. How do we say three times the larger one? Three and in parentheses x plus two is 24. Now what do we do? Get it equal to zero and use what? Factoring or quadratic formula, either one. It doesn't matter which one. I don't care which one you use. Just solve it. So set up consecutive positive odds. First one's X. The next one's going to be X plus 2. Set up your problem. And if we work this out, we'll go ahead and work this one real quick. Be minus 18. This one actually factors. The numbers are not real big, so this one's easy to factor. Uh, the... 6 and negative 3. All right. So because the problem said positive e odd integers, 6 is not positive, nor is it odd, right? So it's not an answer. But 3 is. So if 3 is the first one, and five would be the next one. These integer problems 
uh, I they come up on ACT every now and then, and uh, you guys that are juniors, you can take an ACT next Tuesday. Sometimes you can just figure them out by just guessing a number and trying to, you know, getting the next odd one after that. So if you guessed one and did three and tried to do the formula, it doesn't work. Guess three and get five and, and do it from there. Sometimes you can do it that way, but it actually can be done with these equations like this uh, to make it work out nice. All right, let's look at uh, 10 real quick. Three consecutive positive integers. So... Three consecutive positive integers, such that the product of the median integer and the largest inter integer is 72. Three consecutive positive integers, just positive integers. So if, it, if the first one's 1, the next one's 2 and 3, right? If the first one's x, what's the second one? X plus 1. What's the third one? Yeah, and so on. So it needs three of them, so we get x, x plus 1, and x plus 2. Then we follow the instructions. <clears throat> Half of every math class is following instructions the right way. It says the product, what's product? Multiplying of the median integer. Which one's median? The middle, right? So that'd be this one. And the largest one, be the x plus 2, is 72. So what's our setup? Boom. Now, doesn't that look like the same problem that we set up to do number 1 or number 2? It's the same stuff. Just worded different. Exactly. That's what I want you to see is it's the same math but it's just worded different in the problems. So you would set that x squared plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 72. Subtract. My voice is just about gone. <laughs> Made it through the day, though. Uh, multiply to be negative 70, add to be 3, 10 and negative 7. So x equals 7, x equals negative 10. The negative 10 is out because it said positive, right? So 7 has got to be the first one. So it would be 7, 8, 9. Out of that. So experience is definitely the best thing uh, with this stuff. It is not... <clears throat> 